All right, our last speaker will be the youngest, uh, youngest uh, investigators. He's a technician in Dr. William, uh, Win, uh, Win, Wilton Williams lab. Uh, her name is Sama Holmes, please. She's gonna speak with us about host immunity to uh, pathogenic simian HIV in children, in, not children, in uh, young versus adult mark, uh, rhesus macaque. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for the kind introduction. 1.3 million women and girls living with HIV become pregnant each year. In the absence of intervention, the rate of transmission of HIV from a mother living with HIV to her child during pregnancy, labor, delivery, or breastfeeding ranges from 15 to 45 percent. Thus, more therapeutic strategies are needed to tackle pediatric HIV, including vaccination. Shown here is a model of the HIV envelope trimer that sits on the surface of the virion and mediates entry into target cells. Broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs, of HIV target multiple epitopes on the GP120 portion of the trimer and are highlighted in different colors. These include the GP120, GP41 interface, CD4 binding site, V1, V2 glycan, V3 glycan, and fusion peptide epitopes. Additionally, there is another BNAB epitope in the membrane proximal external region, or MPER, on GP41. Since BNABs target envelope on multiple different HIV strains and can effectively prevent future infections, they are attractive targets for HIV vaccines. Retrospective studies of HIV-infected infants and children demonstrated that they can generate BNABs and do so with faster kinetics than adults. However, the cellular and molecular mechanisms of pediatric BNAB induction are not fully defined. Thus, the purpose of this study was to define early life HIV immunity that leads to the generation of BNABs in infants and children. Our research approach first, first required us to establish a neonatal model for HIV BNAB induction. Here, we recently infected infant rhesus macaques with the pathogenic chimeric simian HIV, or SHIV, and I will describe the generation of this model and the immune response to SHIV on the next slide. Having this model provided the opportunity for comparison of infant and adult immunity to the same SHIV, which I will describe in this talk. This is an outline of the development of the macaque SHIV infection model that we studied. Over the years, Dr. Haynes and colleagues from the Duke Human Vaccine Institute have studied viral envelope and antibody coevolution in HIV-infected individuals that generated BNABs. From these studies, they identified transmitted founder viruses that can establish inf infection and are associated with BNAB induction. Our collaborator, Dr. George Shaw at the University of Pennsylvania, engineered mutations in the envelope from these transmitted founder viruses to facilitate more effect more efficient HIV envelope interactions with monkey CD4 T cells. The envelope is then added to the Simeon immunodeficiency virus, or SIV, backbone, to generate Simeon HIV, what we call SHIVs. These SHIVs induce a pathogenic infection in animals and elicit broadly neutralizing antibodies similar to corresponding HIV infection in humans. In our previously established model, pathogenic SHIV infection of infant rhesus macaques mimicked human HIV infection in infants and children. In this model, SHIV infection induced plasma heterologous HIV neutralizing antibodies, which mapped to multiple HIV BNAB epitopes, suggestive of a polyclonal neutralizing antibody response as described in infants and children. Additionally, a higher frequency of macaques generated heterologous HIV neutralizing antibodies following neonatal compared to adult SHIV infection, and enhanced germinal center activity was associated with heterologous HIV neutralizing antibody induction in neonatal SHIV infection, a known mechanism of BNAB development in adults. Thus, now we have an appropriate animal model to evaluate the mechanisms of early life HIV immunity that may inform BNAB induction in pediatric populations. For our methods, 11 pairs of infant and adult rhesus macaques were infected with the same pathogenic SHIV. Blood and tissue samples from lymph node were collected over the course of 18 to 24 months of infection, and these samples were used to study the comparison of viral dynamics and immune responses between young and adult rhesus macaques. 
Shown on this slide is a graph summarizing plasma viral load following shiv infection in young and adult macaques. The x-axis is time points and months following infection and y-axis is viral load measured as viral RNA copies per mil of blood. Each line represents the viral load over time per animal, young macaques in blue and adults in red. The average viral load for animals in each of the two age groups are shown in darker colors. As you can see, the young macaques maintain a higher viral load over time compared to adults. The graph shown on this slide summarizes the plasma autologous neutralizing antibody responses elicited by shiv infection in young and adult macaques. The x-axis shows time points post-infection and the y-axis shows neutralization titers reported as ID50 values where the higher number indicates better neutralization titers. Each dot represents a single animal with young macaques shown in blue and adults in red. As you can see in the dotted black box compared to adults, Young macaques had higher geometric mean titers against the autologous shiv used for infection at month six post-infection. As shown in the gray dotted box, both young and adult macaques had similar geometric mean titers against the autologous shiv at later time points up to month 18 post-infection. We also tested plasma from young and adult macaques over time for neutralization of a panel of 14 heterologous HIV strains, including the global panel of HIV reference strains used to assess breadth of HIV neutralizing antibodies. We found that at month 18 post-infection, 5 of 11 young macaques generated plasma antibodies that neutralized 1 to 4 heterologous HIV strains at relatively high titers exceeding ID50 values of 100. With this stringent criterion, the average neutralization for tit titers for 10 viruses neutralized by plasma antibodies from the 5 young macaques was 344 ID50. In contrast, only one of 11 adult macaques generated plasma antibodies at month 18 that neutralized two heterologous HIV strains at an average neutralization titer of 169.5 ID50. To evaluate the immunological environment that supported heterologous neutralization antibody induction at a higher frequency in young versus adult macaques, we initially studied germinal center activity in lymph nodes of representative shiv-infected macaques after 12 months of infection. We found that young and adult macaques had similar levels of antigen-specific germinal center B cells and plasma blasts, as well as CD4 T follicular helper cells. However, young macaques had lower levels of CD4 T regulatory cells compared to adult macaques. As shown in the graph on the right of this slide, T follicular regulatory cells are reported as percentage of total lymph nodes with each dot representing a single animal, young macaques shown in blue and adults in red again. These data suggested that young macaques had a less immunosuppressive germinal center environment compared to adults, which may contribute to heterologous HIV neutralizing antibody induction over time. In summary, young rhesus macaques had higher viral loads over time compared to adults. Young rhesus macaques had similar or higher magnitudes of binding plasma antibodies and autologous HIV neutralizing antibodies compared to adults. A higher frequency of young shiv infected macaques compared to adults generated heterologous HIV neutralizing antibodies. And young macaques demonstrated lower frequencies of germinal center regulatory T cells and lymph node following shiv infection compared to adults. In conclusion, neonatal shiv infection in rhesus macaques elicited HIV envelope reactive neutralizing antibodies of similar or better magnitudes and quality compared to adults. Neonatal immunity provided a more permissive environment for heterologous HIV neutralizing antibody induction, including a less immunosuppressive germinal center where B cell maturation occurs. Finally, these data suggest that infants may be an appropriate target population for future pediatric HIV vaccines to elicit heterologous HIV neutralizing antibodies that can develop into BNABs prior to sexual debut. For future studies, we plan to isolate and characterize antibodies derived from antigen-specific B cells in blood and lymph node tissue and evaluate envelope evolution in young and adult macaques that may shape antibody response. And I would like to end by acknowledging our collaborators here at Duke University and other institutions, as well as our funders. Thank you for your attention. Very nice presentation. Question from the audience? All right. Beautiful presentation, thank you. Do you wanna speculate on why you might see better maturation in infants versus adults? 
Okay, so there's kind of like two theories. Um, we plan to isolate the antibodies and then look at the, um, the genetics of those and see if the antibodies, their genetics differ between infants and adults. That's one. And then the other is the immune environment in babies could be very different. Um, we saw with the viral load that they did not suppress the virus like most of the adults. Babies obviously have a much more naive immune system. Um, and a lot of the antibodies that are effective against HIV are going to seem auto or polyreactive. And an, uh, an adult immune system, their regulatory cells are going to try and suppress those versus an infants will not. So thank you. Question for you. Do you see this? different in immune response in HIV as well, in children versus adult, the immune response in it for, for HIV? In, like in humans? In humans, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. The, the other question I have is, um, so there's more increase in heterotologous neutralizing antibody in children, in, uh, in young uh, macaques, but then there's higher viral load. So how do you explain that paradox? It does seem to me a disconnect between laboratory function assay versus what's going on in a in a in vivo system. Mm -hmm. uh, so viral load has been shown to be indicative of neutralizing antibody induction. Um, so that's kind of a sign. Well, is, was that your question? Or I would expect that if you have higher level of neutralizing antibody or higher diversity and frequency, that would have correspond to lower viral load. Am I not correct? Oh, eventually, yes. So there's currently ongoing. This is to follow further time points to see more okay. about that. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you.